Hi everybody, I'm Bill Whittle and this is The Firewall. Well, President Obama just returned from an overseas visit trying to convince Britain and Germany to sign his trade deal and generally butting into European politics in a way that many had not expected when President Peace Prize descended from heaven to give the world the new, improved, smart diplomacy. Now, the latest international disaster occurred in Great Britain, where the president gave a speech urging the UK to remain in the European Union, despite warnings from many quarters that such intrusion into the idea of the Brexit, that would be the British exit from the EU, well, that that would be less than appreciated, President Stupid went and did it anyway, prompting this reporter to ask the following question. Do you have any sympathy with people who think this is none of your business? That's from the left, 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 left-wing BBC of all people. London Mayor Boris Johnson called the president's remarks ridiculous and weird. Queen Elizabeth apparently asked him not to make the pro-EU speech that he just went on to make, with President Golfcart telling Britain that if it left the EU, it would move to the back of the queue as far as America was concerned. Well, the important things got done anyway. You know, wouldn't it be nice if all President Smart Diplomacy had done during his administration was just destroy the special relationship between the United States and our best friend in the world, a catastrophe that began in his first days in office when he shipped the British gift of a bust of Winston Churchill back to England before he'd even unpacked his bags. Yes, but that would simply be a disaster. President Catastrophe has damaged relations with all of our European partners who've said quietly and lately not so quietly that they are astounded at his arrogance and his naivete. Russia gets more aggressive with us every day. They flew attack jets within 25 feet of a U.S. Navy vessel, and no doubt they're awaiting the strongly worded letter in reply. As a matter of fact, when we were first introduced to the miracle of smart diplomacy, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton presented the Russian foreign minister with a gag red button for him to push, a button mark reset in order to reset the new smart diplomacy. But that button was mistranslated. So let's make sure we understand this correctly. When President Failure's U.S. State Department on worldwide television debuted the new smart diplomacy, they had one Russian word to translate correctly, and they got that one word wrong. Meanwhile, China's building man-made islands in the South China Sea and warning U.S. and allied warships to stay away from their new territory. In Libya, Muammar Gaddafi, who turned over his nuclear and chemical weapons program the day after U.S. forces pulled Saddam Hussein from his hiding place, well, Gaddafi was overthrown and Libya became such a chaotic bloodbath that U.S. forces found themselves aiding al-Qaeda on the battlefield. And after months of begging for additional security, Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans died as Obama and Hillary watched from a drone on TV. Then they ordered the rescue attempt to stand down, and then both of them lied to the American people, telling them that the Benghazi attack on 9-11 was all the result of an obscure YouTube video. President Failure backed the overthrow of pro-American Hosni Mubarak in Egypt handing the country over to the Muslim Brotherhood. He then stumbled, backing over his own red line in Syria, allowing the Russians to come to his rescue and, incidentally, allowing the Russians to achieve major player status in the Middle East overnight after decades of effective, non-smart diplomacy sidelining of the Russians. President Failure could not, or would not, conclude a simple status of forces agreement in Iraq so American troops walked away. Actually, they were ordered to walk away from a hard-won victory and allowed the last vestiges of the ravaged and defeated AQI, that would be Al-Qaeda in Iraq, to recover in the absence of American strength just enough to rename itself ISIS. And now that we've created the Iraq war defeat that President Failure and his treason party had promised the American people, we are quietly sending more troops back to Iraq and to Syria and Libya and Afghanistan, all to try to make up the ground that President Failure has not just lost but actually thrown away. And of all the things that Barack Obama did to damage this country overseas, it's the one thing that he didn't do that's the most heartbreaking. Because back in 2009, the people of Iran rose up against the murderers and fanatics that had been running their lives, demanding freedom and democracy. The mullahs were teetering on the brink for months. A mere word from the President of the United States in support would have encouraged them the way that President Reagan encouraged Eastern Europeans to overthrow their communist tyrants. You know, it was the only time during eight catastrophic years that President Obama didn't have a single thing to say. So, now the sanctions on Iran are lifted. 
billions of dollars of funds have been freed for more terrorist massacres. And the Iranians have cheated on President Gullible's treaty before the ink's even dry. President Catastrophe has called the Israeli Prime Minister chicken shit, while his and his former Secretary of State and currently his likely successor, both of their closest advisors are Iranian. So there's nothing to deter these Iranian fanatics' nuclear ambitions now other than the speed of their centrifuges. Oh, and by the way, Barking Mad North Korea is reported to have developed a hydrogen bomb and has just launched a ballistic missile from a submarine. This is Obama and his smart diplomacy, the top secret details of which have been leaked to whoever might be curious as a result of the criminal arrogance of Hillary Clinton, former Secretary of State and the Treason Party's presidential nominee, who cut and pasted top secret and above top secret information onto a server in a bathroom in an apartment in New York City in order to escape Freedom of Information Act requests regarding the Clinton Foundation. Oh, we're gonna pay for this, and so are our kids and so will their kids. We need your help to keep these messages coming. If you want to help us make a difference, please go to BillWhittle.com and become a member.